Mr. Small. Mr. Small was very small, probably the smallest person you've ever seen in your whole life, or perhaps the smallest person you've never seen in your whole life, because he was so small you probably wouldn't see him anyway. Mr. Small was about as big as a pin, which isn't very big at all, so perhaps we should say that Mr. Small was as small as a pin. Mr. Small lived in a small house underneath a daisy at the bottom of Mr. Robinson's garden. It was a very nice house, although very tiny, and it suited Mr. Small very well indeed. He liked living there. Now this story is all about the time Mr. Small decided to get a job. The trouble was, what sort of job could Mr. Small do? After all, there aren't that many small jobs. Mr. Small had thought about it for a long time, but hadn't had any ideas, not one. He was thinking about it now while he was having lunch. He was having half a pea, one crumb and a drop of lemonade. Mr. Small thought and thought while he was eating his big lunch, but it was no use. Thinking just made him thirsty, so he had another drop of lemonade. I know, he thought to himself, after lunch, I'll go and see Mr. Robinson and ask his advice. So after lunch, he left his house and walked to Mr. Robinson's house at the top of the garden. It was quite a long walk for somebody as small as Mr. Small, and halfway there he stopped for a rest. He sat on a pebble, feeling quite out of breath. A worm crawled by and stopped. Good afternoon, Mr. Small, said the worm. Good afternoon, Walter, said Mr. Small to the worm, whom he knew quite well. Up for a walk, are you? asked Walter. Going to see Mr. Robinson, replied Mr. Small. Oh, said Walter. About a job, added Mr. Small. Oh, said Walter the worm again and crawled off. Walter the worm was of very few words. After he'd rested for a while, Mr. Small set off again and walked all of the rest of the way to Mr. Robinson's house without stopping once. When he got there, he climbed up the steps to Mr. Robinson's back door. He knocked at the door. Nobody heard him. He knocked again at the door and nobody heard him. The trouble was, you see, that if you're as small as Mr. Small, you don't have a very loud knock. Mr. Small looked up. There, high above his head, was a doorbell. How can I ring the dead bell when I can't reach it? thought Mr. Small to himself. He started to climb up the wall, brick by brick, to reach the bell. He had climbed up four bricks when he made the mistake of looking down. Oh dear, he said and fell. Bang! Ouch, said Mr. Small, rubbing his head. Just then, Mr. Small heard footsteps. It was the postman. The postman came to the door, posted his letters and was just about to leave when he heard a voice. Hello, said the voice. The postman looked down. Hello, he said to Mr. Small. Who are you? I'm Mr. Small, said Mr. Small. Will you ring the bell for me? Of course I will, replied the postman in answer to Mr. Small's question. And reaching out, he pressed the bell with his finger. Thank you, said Mr. Small. My pleasure, said the postman, and off he went. Mr. Small heard footsteps coming to the door, and the door opened. Mr. S Mr. Robinson opened the door and looked out. That's funny, he said. I'm sure I heard somebody ring the bell. He was about to shut the door when he heard a little voice. Hello, said the voice. Hello, Mr. Robinson. Mr. Robinson looked down and down. Hello, he said. What are you doing here? I've come to ask your advice, said Mr. Small to Mr. Robinson. Well, said Mr. Robinson, you better come in and have a talk. Mr. Small followed Mr. Robinson into the house and, perched on the arm of Mr. Robinson's favourite chair, he told him how he couldn't think of a job that he could do. Mr. Robinson sipped a cup of tea and listened. 
So you see, Mr. Small explained, how difficult it is. Yes, I can see that, said Mr. Robinson. But leave it to me. Mr. Robinson knew a lot of people. Mr. Robinson knew that somebody who worked in a restaurant and arranged for Mr. Small to work there, putting mustard into mustard pots. But Mr. Small kept falling into the pots and getting covered in mustard, so he left the job. Mr. Robinson knew somebody who worked in a lolly shop and arranged for Mr. Small to work there, serving lollies. But Mr. Small kept falling into the lolly jars, so he left that job. Mr. Robinson knew somebody who worked in a place where they made matches and arranged for Mr. Small to work there, packing matches into boxes. But Mr. Small kept getting shoved in the boxes with the matches, so he left that job. Mr. Robinson knew somebody who worked on a farm and arranged for Mr. Small to work there, sorting out the brown eggs from the white eggs. But Mr. Small kept getting trapped by the eggs, so he left that job. What are we going to do with you, Mr. Robinson asked Mr. Small one evening. Don't know, said Mr. Small in a small voice. I've got one more idea, said Mr. Robinson. I know somebody who writes children's books. Perhaps you could work for him. So the following day, Mr. Robinson took Mr. Small to meet the man who wrote children's books. Can I work for you, Mr. Small asked the man. Yes, you can, replied the man. Pass me that pencil and tell me all about the jobs you've been doing. Then I'll write a book about it and I'll call it Mr. Small, he added. But children won't want to read a book all about me, explained Miss, exclaimed Mr. Small. Yes, they will, replied the man. They'll like it very much. And you did, didn't you? The end.